So this is the practical session we are doing today. And the plan is to do today from 1 to 3, and then Ben and Friday will do uh, task 4 to 6. All right, so the objectives is to, you must have trained with Z and with Aggie or, or me on using partial derivatives in vector functions and how to get the gradient, how to uh, do integrals. So, and last week as well, you worked with SymPy, symbolic math library in Python, and how to define a symbol and define a function on that symbol. So today we will we'll do the partial derivatives on these functions with the symbols we will de we're defining. We will get the global minimum and maximum by finding critical points exactly the same way we do it on paper and pen. You get the first derivative and make that equal to zero and then identify the points and investigate from the second derivative what is a minimum and a maximum and then uh, find out if it's the global minimum or maximum by substitution and uh, identify all the critical <coughs> points of interest. I appreciate if you uh, mute yourself and only unmute uh, if you are asking questions. Uh, okay. Yep. This is it. Okay. All right. We'll resume now. Uh, so, as every time, you need to start uh, Anaconda Navigator, launch the Jupyter Notebook, and then you will have this running. So, we always create new one to experiment with. You need to give it a name. As it says here, crit, uh, Practical 4. And let's see what's the first task. So the best way to handle these practicals is to actually do it with a paper and pen first and then check your answers. Even if you're doing anything for your coursework or for any tutorial, it's always good to check with Python. It will correct any of your misconceptions or will get you to search more for what is going on wrong if you are running into mistakes into the calculations themselves. So let's start with the first example. You have this uh, multivariable function. The variables are m and n. And we need to create the symbols. And of course, symbols are, is a class in the SymPy. So you'll have to say from SymPy package import symbol. So this way, I have the class in my namespace and can start using it. And then we'll create the first symbol. Second simple. And then the function is f is equal m squared n plus 10 m n. So f equal m and then two asterisks is for the power m square and then multiplied by n and then add it to 10 multiplied by m, multiplied by m. So that should be it. Let's run and see. Yes, m square n plus 10 m n. So now if you click f dot derivative. Oh, no, no. Yeah, he, yes. We cannot see your screen. Are you, are you sharing your screen with us? Yes, I guess so. Okay. Oh, all right. Where is it? Share, share. Yes, you are sh screen sharing. How come you are not seeing my screen? Uh, let's see again. You share screen. Okay, I can see it now. Sorry. Okay, yeah. that's all right. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> all right, so to be able to use the simple class, you have to import it from the SymPy package. So this is how we started. And then we had this function of two symbols. You have to define the symbols first before using them. And then define the function. Uh, raising something to the power of something, then you have to use the two asterisks for the notation, m to n, m squared, and then multiplied by n. So this is how uh, it's defined. 
And then 10 times n times n, this is, you just use the normal multiply operator. Okay, so when you print f, this is, gives you an equation style. So we have a derivative class that we need to import. In the derivative class, we can say the derivative of f with respect to m. So if you say derivative, if it was a, a single variable, and then you need to take that derivative into a variable so that you can print this variable. Instead of being anonymous, so it gives you the notation exactly as you type it in mathematical notation. So this is the derivative of this function with respect to m only, right? So if you do it by hand, you should have done it by hand first, you will find, now we did not do it yet, this is just says that we are taking the derivative of this function with respect to m only. So do it as we took last week with Ben is what actually gives you the result. So when you're uh, taking the derivative with respect to m, m squared becomes 2m and the n here is constant, comes as is, and then 10mn, m here was to the power of 1 becomes to the power of 0, so it goes away, and the 10n is the constant that stays. All right? So it should be straightforward. How can you do the next requirement in the practical sheet is to do it with respect to n. So which variable will we need to change here to do it with respect to n? Yes. Yes, m. When we did it with respect to m, the second variable here was saying this function, do the derivative for it with respect to m. So if you want to do it with respect to n, we just repeat the same, but m becomes n, and then do it. Becomes the opposite, and instead of taking it with respect to m, it will be with respect to n. So m squared here is a constant that comes as is, and n was to the power of 1 becomes to the power of 0, so it goes away. And 10mn with respect to n becomes 10m is the constant and n goes away. Easy? So these things works only well and becomes educative if you have if you really do it by hand and you're just confirming the syntax, you're learning just the syntax of how do you pass it to these libraries. And then if you've done anything wrong in your uh, manual calculations, you correct that. You understand what went wrong when you are uh, getting the result from the Python packages. So we did that. First, write down your answer in a paper and compare your result. So let's do another one, higher order derivatives, and finding the maxima and minima. So here we are actually solving. We're not just getting the derivative. We are actually solving it as well and substituting the, the normal way we would do with a paper and pen. So let's define this. So let's do it the same way we did that. Uh, we'll define uh, x simple and function y so x and then here is y and then it becomes x to the power of 5 I guess it was x to the power of minus 25 x3 so we don't have n 25x to the power of 3. So let's check if this is the right syntax. x5 minus 25x minus 25x. x to the power of 5 minus 25x cubed plus 50x plus 50x. Right. Let's check this one. x to the power of 5 minus 25x cubed plus, 20, uh, plus 50x. Sorry. 
plus 50x. So this is the new function. And following the, uh, the following graph shows the function when x is in the range. Uh, so to get this range, let's import numpy and do it in a different way as well. So we did it as a symbol. And this is symbolic mass. So let's do it as import numpy as np and have a different x um, xmp is equal the range and bit dot range from minus five to five and then we can take it to 0 0.01 for instance and then y becomes this function of right and then let's import matplot to see if we can do the same Sorry. How do we do this? I guess it was plot x y. So uh, mat pi plot. Sorry, I forgot to mat plot dot pi plot. I got the whole thing into it. So look at this function, when you have it x to the power of 5 minus 25x cubed minus 50x. So if you study this by i, how many local minima do you get? Can you type in the chat? So if you do the same procedure that we did with uh, in the tutorials and with ye in the lecture, how many local minimas would you get and how many global minimas, how many local maxima and how many lo global maxima? Any answer to that? Okay, so the global maxima is the absolute maximum point, all right? So next to it, it's lower than it, but there's no other higher point in the whole graph. The local is another point that it is local meaning in its neighborhood. Next to it, this is the highest point that next to it is going down and next to it from this side is going down as well. So if you are comparing with the gradient descent, you can easily get at this point and think it is, if you are doing iterative up to, uh, it's not changing for a while, this is the stopping condition for your iterations, then you might stop it here. If you started from this direction, for instance, Right, but if you stop here, then it becomes the global maxima. Here it's called local maxima. It's the highest point only in its neighboring points. It went up here and then going down. So in its neighboring points, this is the global, this is the local maxima. Similarly, this is the local minima. Local meaning at this point, it's going up from both directions. So at this point, it's going down. It's the lowest point at this neighborhood right? But then the global minima is actually here. So how do we do this with calculations? Exactly the same way we did it with uh, on a paper and pen, we need to evaluate the derivatives to this function. So we have the derivative of this y x 
we would get the critical points by getting dy. Yeah. Right. Uh, so we we'll say dy equal this derivative and then dy. Oh, so these are all the critical points. So instead of having it, it's, am I having the right y and x? Y, I think I should, shouldn't should have used, this is the, N, uh, the NumPy format. So let's go back to the symbolic mass format. So it becomes a better y. This is the y that we see. If we get its derivative, then it becomes better. So if we say dy dot uh, do it, then this is the derivative, right? So how do we uh, set that to zero? We do substitution. So we do solve, first of all. We get that derivative and we want to solve it. So import solve from SimPy. And then say dy dot, uh, sorry, solve dy. And the solution that you get, call it critical points. All of it, right? Best way is to say solve uh, question marks so that you get you understand what it's doing. So if we say solve question mark algebraically solves equation and systems of equations. So if it's a polynomial, if it's transcendental, piecewise combinations of the above, systems of linear or polynomial equations, systems containing relational expressions. Okay, so it is in the SimPy package, so you can use any symbols as you wish. Whenever it's hard on you to do it by paper and pen, check your answers here and find out where you might have been wrong. So let's check the content of these critical points and what, what are they. Oh, I did not solve. Solve. So this TY, did I do the TY? Do it. Uh, do I say... Things wrong with that. Please execute uh, line number 27. I didn't get what you were saying. I think you forgot to run the line number, uh, line 27 uh, in the Python directory. I forgot to. Can you say it again? Sorry. You forgot to uh, run the code at line 27, I think. Can you write that in the chat? There's something I'm not hearing. Sorry about that. So I did the symbol. It was maybe because I did it in critical... Uh, Yeah, here it is. Because I've de de defined this, is that please execute the line 27. Uh, yeah, okay. Anyway, I copied it in one cell better than trying the NumPy version and then the symbolic mass version. So in one cell, this is the symbolic way. So this is x as a symbol, and this is y defined from that x, and then this is the derivative and done already. So taking that derivative, we are solving for the critical points. This is the critical points at x, different positions. You can also try to check them one by one. They look nice this way. So this is a critical point. This is the second one, third one, and fourth one. Right? So if you look here, you'll find that these are the x values of all critical points, the points where the curve have actually change its gradient uh, direction are all the critical points. So we don't know yet if they are local maxima, uh, local 
minima or global maxima or global minima? Anyone can suggest how do we find out from these four points which one is the global, local or minimum or maxima? using the second derivative of the function. So here is an interesting sentence to try. It wasn't easy to find that from uh, the help on derivative. It doesn't say, actually, that to, to do that you just say comma 2. I tried to search for it and it wasn't very visible, maybe down on the list. So this way, from that y, x, solve for x, the derivative of y with respect to x, on uh, second one. All right. So this is the second derivative on this function. So how do do you remember how do you test if it's maximum or minimum? You substitute. Right. So you do have four values to substitute and check when it's positive. When it's greater than zero, it means it's what? It's minimum. When it's negative, it's maximum. If it was zero, it's a saddle point and you need to search for another critical point to work on. All right, so from these x positions, we only have the x positions now. And then this is the x value, another x value, another x value, another x value for this highest one. And from the second derivative, we can easily tell dy2 dot substitute of what? We copy that critical point, substitute, what are we substituting? Substitute x. What do we substitute x with? The first value here, right? And then we evaluate. All right, so this becomes your first value. So did you see this syntax? What I did, let's build it step by step. So dy2 dot substitute, and it's a function, so we need round brackets. And then the syntax is to put uh, curly braces, says we are substituting the variable, the symbol x, with what? With this value, sorry, of the critical points array. Which one? Now the first one. We took the the, the first one and now we're taking the second one and then evaluate all right so we do the same for the remaining ones now two and three so these are the four points indexing starting what's that oh sorry three starting from zero to the third index, which is four, the first one. What if we get two negative values? Here's two negative values, here's negative and here's negative on the second derivative. It means what? When it's less than zero, it means what? It's maximum point at this x, right? So at the x of, at this x, at this point x, it's what, zero. The second derivative is more than zero. It means it's minimum at this x, right? At the value of critical point one, which is at this x, it is negative. So it is maximum here, right? And then at two, it's negative, so it's maximum here. And at three, it's as well, it's negative, it's positive, so it's uh, minimum here. Um, positive, then it's minimum, right, okay? So we know how to identify which ones are positive, uh, are mi max minima and maxima, but which are local and which are global. So x1 and x4, because here x1, x1 is 0, sorry, and x4. So in the counting here, they're using the mathematical notations by starting by 1, 1 to 4. But here we are using the computer science by starting from 0 to 3. 
that's very likely one of them will be local maximum, right? So because we have seen it visibly by eye, we know that we, ha we have two maximum points here and here. So this is the global and this is the local one. And then we have two ones here as minimum. This is the global minimum and this is the local minimum. So we have four critical points as we got. We got only the x values. And by substituting in the, these values in the second derivative of the function, we find which ones are the minimum ones. So this and this are the minimum ones. And this and this are the maximum ones. Now we need to identify the global from these versus the local. Right? So we need to substitute where? Because eventually you can tell from the x and y coordinates which ones are uh, maximum and minimum because you've already identified, you compared the whole cr uh, curve. So now we need to substitute in the original function, but you also include the uh, extreme points. So all the critical points that you have re received and the endpoints of the domain where x is minus 5 up to x uh, equal 5. So now you need to do six substitutions in the original function, including the x minimum and the x maximum. So you are only getting the global minimum, so you are not going to substitute for the ones that are, so if you do know how to do it here for the uh, global minimum, then you know how to do that for the global maximum as well. So we identify the first one and the last one to be minimum, but which is local, which is global, we will need to substitute in the original function as well, right? So let's do that. And then to, to the last one, okay, and then to the minimum and to the maximum. Okay, so from this you have here 20, minus 27, minus 389, here is minus 250, here is 250. Which one do you think going to be the global and the local? So the lowest point is, of course, the most negative one, comes from x, from the last point in x, in the critical points of x. So this one comes from this point. If you print back this point, so this is your x value, and this is your y value for the, these two values together are your x and y coordinates of the uh, global minimum. Here. So obviously 385 negative 385, and square root of something here. Yes, all right? So already you're answering this. It's visible, you can see it by eye, you can do it by calculations, you can do it by code, it all gets to the same result at the end. Okay, so this way you can uh, loop through your understanding, see if you can do it with paper and pen, if you can do the calculations right, it's easy to uh, multiply by negative, uh, or lose the sign at some point, do an error in the, in the arithmetic on paper and pen, so you correct yourself using these packages and find out if your thinking is clear or not. If anyone is having doubt about what we have done, this is what it says in this paragraph, it doesn't work when you are just watching someone doing, doing it for you. 
you have to do it again yourself and write the code yourself and write the syntax and be comfortable with it. So you can easily uh, substitute one variable with another, try a different function. You can easily express the functions the same way Python is expecting it without much errors. And if you're having doubt, practice will, will fix any problem. Any problem about that? Everyone finding it easy to find the critical points and then investigating the points which are global maxima, global minima, local maxima and minima. All right, I will take it that you are all happy and we can go on with the next task. So here we are doing integrals. Uh, the integral function is sx dx. So this means with respect to x. But you have here a constant s that you don't want to lose for some reason. It's not given a value. So you have symbol s and symbol x. So it is like partial integration with respect to x only. So we will do that. Say from simpy package import integral and simple already there and say s equal simple s and x already is defined from before but we can just to make sure everything's fine and then we have the integral now not the derivative for what s multiplied by x and we want the integral with respect to x. So after the comma, first one takes the equation, second one takes the what are we integrating again. So this is how it is written exactly in a mathematical notation. So that this is how very nice the symbolic mass library is. It can be used to get to the publications or the exact way you are writing it uh, by hand. So similar to limit and derivative classes, you can now evaluate the integral by just using the do it. You already got used to it, so we we'll say do it because this is just doing what for you. Defining the integral but not actually ex uh, executing it. So when you do that, this was x to the power 1, you know that you increase the power and then you divide by that new value. So x squared over 2. And s is a constant that remains. Here's an indefinite integral. You should have added c, the constant that you lost in that differentiation, but it just didn't put it here. Exactly the same way you define the definite integral. All right, so it's all the same function here, but you add after the x, you say the bounds of x is 0 and 5. So obviously you put the upper bound first and then the lower bound next. So this is how we did it as indefinite integral. And then to make it definite integral, here you are saying with respect to x, but you don't enter x like that. You, you put another brackets and then put the bounds of x. This is how it expects it to be. Right? And then again, either you define it this way, so it looks exactly as we write it, and then here you would execute it. So you understand that by executing a definite integral, you are actually, uh, after you do this, after you do the the integration equation, you substitute it with the higher bound minus the substitution with the lower bound and it gives you a value rather than a function. But because you have s as a, uh, as a constant that's not yet given a value, then it keeps that constant as is. So you just whenever you substitute s with any value, you have how this integrates with respect to x. Right. So here is another exercise to work on. It's the integral for x dx from 6 to 2, the bounds, the lower bound 6 and the upper bound 2. 
So do it by hand and just put your answers in the chat. And then you should, while following any of these practicals, you should be having the Anaconda running and the Python notebook running and whatever I'm doing, you're replicating on your screens as well. So if you can do it now by hand and type in the chat what you are getting, and then we will do it together on, uh, on the notebook, on the Python notebook. All right, I'll give you a few minutes. You still have time. And if you have any questions, type them or unmute yourself and say them. All right, I will assume no one is, is typing anything in the chat. Do, do you give, do you want two, three minutes? Or do you want to ask any question? Okay, we'll do it then. It's very easy, you just repeat the code as is. But define new function, upper bound, lower bound in formula. What do you mean in formula? Remember, this is how we define the uh, definite integral. So this is without. Indefinite means you just put x. So we have this integral. The, the, the new one is easier because we don't have the s symbol right and it just x all right if we have defined it only this way it means it's indefinite all right so how do we make it definite and the upper bound is two and then six yes so someone says the answer would be minus 16 so let's say two six and then see if we are getting the same shape that we are looking for yes so it's x dx from the upper bound, uh, oh sorry, it's opposite 2 and 6, then this is 6 and this is 2. So you start with the lower bound, all right, and then if we say do it, it should be because we don't have the s constant now so we should have an exact value someone says minus 16 okay all right so this should be the last task we are doing so and you just it's always good when you do it by hand first and then just uh, verify by simpy and see if your result was or not and if not then you knew you need to uh, fix that. So I guess this is task four. This is supposed to be done on Friday. So we will stop here. If you have any question or in doubt of anything we have done uh, or think you need more practice or anything, just let me know. Or unmute yourself and speak. You don't have to chat. All right, it seems everyone is happy. I'll stop the sharing now and the recording. Recording stopped. Any other question you might have before leaving? All right, everything seems easy. No, I didn't get that. Can you repeat, please?